Many of you have heard me talk about reinventing the Chrysler Corporation, but sometimes words or even 60-second commercials don't do justice to something as profound as the changes we made at Chrysler. That's why we decided to make this film. It's intended as a behind-the-scenes look at the new way we make cars and run our business. Now, if you've been in the car business as long as I have, you'll see that we have pretty well gotten rid of the old way of doing things. Now, engineers, manufacturers, marketers, and designers work together in teams, making their own decisions to solve product problems up front. The result is a new company, a company that has cut over $3 billion in operating costs while bringing out more new products than ever. Better quality products at lower cost to the marketplace faster. A company reinvented to compete in the 90s, a tougher, faster, more competitive time and place. But don't take my word for it, just watch. We're going to lead the competition. We're going to surprise a whole bunch of people in this industry that never thought that we could survive, let alone lead. I think the, the fun is coming back. The passion in making cars is back. Now I think we're going to be known for great vehicles, and that's what it's all about. It's not like it used to be like management only and hourly work and having no input into the situation. But now we're all one team. It's the first time in 26 years of Chrysler Corporation where everyone is, is working together as a team in order to make the product work. It allows you to express yourself and to give ideas to others and they give you their ideas and you're able to incorporate them and build the kind of car that you always dream to build. Throw more and more responsibility to the teams, uh, give them all the tools and communicate with them all the feedback of how they're doing and step back and watch it roll. Sounds simple, but uh, it's, a it's a major culture change. These and thousands like them are the voices of change at the Chrysler Corporation. And this is a product of that change, the new Eagle Vision TSI. The story that is emerging at Chrysler is one of the most exciting industry stories I have seen in my lifetime. In the last couple of years, this company realized that to produce world-class automobiles, they had to change the way they were making cars. We have to do things considerably differently than we have. If we just continue to uh, develop vehicles the way we have in the past, then we'll just quietly go out of business. So when this car was developed, Chrysler broke with the past. Today, the thousands of people it takes to make a car have been reorganized into what they call platform teams. And these teams have been endowed with a new spirit and unprecedented decision-making ability. This sounds pretty ordinary until you know how big a change this is. In the past, Chrysler, like most American car companies, was divided into separate departments known in the industry as chimneys. In that system, the work was done sequentially. Each department did its job and then passed the plans on to the next department. If there were any problems, the plans were kicked backwards and the whole process started over again. Meanwhile, the finance department tried to predict costs, but were unable to control them. The inevitable conflicts between the departments had to be resolved by top management. We had too many conflicting objectives between the chimneys and the functional organizations. There were always conflicts both from a time standpoint and from a cost or investment or a supplier relationship. So many things conflicted and we really lost sight of what the real customer wanted. So Chrysler restructured into the platform system where the departments play a supporting role to four teams, large car, small car, minivan, and Jeep truck. People from the different chimneys work together simultaneously to make sure the designer's concept can be engineered and the engineer's plan can be manufactured so that problems are solved up front without costly modifications. And the loudest voice on the team is the customer's voice. If you look closely at this meeting, you begin to see what the platform system is all about. These people are part of the small car or PL platform team. The vehicle is a mule car. Prototype mechanical components are packaged inside an old body. The team is made up of people from manufacturing, procurement and supply, finance, product planning, marketing, and parts and service. Now, instead of working separately in their own departments, they are working together. Under discussion is the car's noise, vibration, and harshness levels, known as NVH. I didn't think NVH was as big an issue as fun to drive, value for money, fuel economy. I think NVH is a significant issue, Bob, because one thing, the customer many times will judge a car by how the car sounds and feels. Mm -hmm and that reeks of quality. And we surely don't want a customer to perceive there is a problem when there really isn't. Where were we on the base car prior, prior to this? On the base car for material, we were approximately $40 above objective. I'd be absolutely shocked 
if this car uh, isn't by far the best small car we've ever done. And I think that's the power of having people work together. I've never been associated with so many clever, innovative ways to solve problems as I have been on this program. Senior management has sent the very strong signal that we want teamwork between and among functions and that teamwork will be rewarded uh, and, and not turf warfare. When the engineers were asked to try to work within, within these new platform teams, almost overnight they, they started to appreciate uh, the benefit of it, which was to cut the waste out of the, the way we were running our operation. The other big change at Chrysler is that the teams, really everybody, have been given a much larger role in the thinking and decisions that go into making a car. The tone has been set by senior management who want to get rid of the top-down style of the past. We really are trying to get the supervisor in the broadest sense, the boss, to no longer be the wellspring of all wisdom and authority and to stop being the boss, but instead uh, to be a teacher and a coach, um, as opposed to saying, calling people in and saying, all right, damn it, here's what I want you guys to do, you know, the way you used to see it in the movies. Uh, that's, that style just doesn't work anymore. So the story of the designing, engineering, manufacturing, and marketing of cars at Chrysler has been rewritten. Today, the story begins with the platform teams who are responsible for developing new car concepts and they begin the process by asking customers what they want in a new vehicle. In my next minivan, I'd like to see the uh, back seats be able to fold down so the kids could lay down in the back if they need to. Chrysler routinely shows models of future vehicles to randomly selected potential customers to study reactions to new designs. I personally don't care for the, uh, the headlight treatment. I don't like that little shelf underneath the headlight. Today, the uh, customer's opinion is incorporated very early concept development. Uh, in the past, we used to design the cars, take them out and show them to the customers, and then try to figure out how we were going to describe them in advertising and marketing and so on and so forth. But today, the, the customer actually has input very early on before the, before the designs go down on paper, before the models are built. While the customers are one source of ideas for future cars, designers working at places like Chrysler's Pacifica Design Studio sketch out and build models for tomorrow's concept cars. These advanced designs are the genesis of the cars that will be rolling off the assembly line years later. Chrysler now has a much stronger commitment to developing a variety of new concepts. What we're doing out here is really letting our imagination flow and and it's separate from our day-to-day -day activities. It's something where we really want to have people have the ability to express themselves without any limitations. The futuristic ideas of Pacifica and the customer preferences gathered from around the country converge here at the CTC studios, where the teams design the cars that will ultimately be produced. The cars you see here tell the story of the evolution of this thesis for the new large cars known as the L8. They start out with the Portofino concept car, then the Millennium was conceived, and finally the ideas of these concept cars evolved into today's LH, like this Dodge Intrepid. One advanced concept that emerged from the Portofino to the LHs is called cab forward. The windshield was moved forward, the rear wheels were pulled back, and the width was increased. The result is a larger interior and easier access in the same size car. Once the basic concepts for the future car have been determined, designers work on paper and in clay models on the details of the design. Empowered with greater decision-making ability, staff designers work with a new spirit. In the past, we could spend a lot of time working on a project, doing a lot of sketching, do a lot of modeling, and it would all be for naught because certain members of up upper management could come along and wipe the whole thing out and say, I don't like it. And a lot of times it left you sort of hanging in the breeze because you didn't know what you were doing. You are a little bit disillusioned. You had to start over. Now you're more involved. We're all in on the discussion. Everyone's opinion is solicited. And I think that we have a bigger stake in what comes out on the road and ultimately how the company fares. The platform team members collaborate to design and engineer every component in the vehicle. This takes place here at the Chrysler Technology Center, or CTC, where the architecture of the building is compatible with the new system. Each floor of this building is assigned to a single platform. The fourth floor is the PL, or small car platform. 
The wide open layout of this space makes it possible for people to work together and develop the personal relationships so important to team building. Teamwork is further enhanced by a computer network that provides instantaneous and comprehensive design information to all functions in the platform. Before the platform process, we frequently heard that design officer engineering would improve a feature or add a feature that ultimately add cost, but the cost wouldn't show up till a year or two later. And finance's job was to explain the fact, here it is, here's how it got there. Now, we in finance participate in the decision process as part of the team, recognizing the cost and deciding, should we put this cost in or not? The design process includes the making of prototypes of the components and the assembly of the full-scale working versions of the vehicle. Squeeze, hit. Squeeze. Here again, the platform system is at work. Employees of the assembly plant where this car will eventually be built are working side by side with the design engineers, trying to anticipate problems and solving them before they become a problem in the plant. Back in the 70s, an engineer wouldn't even talk to us. They had all the answers and we were just a worker. Now they're listening to us and taking our ideas and applying them into the build. Being from manufacturing and the Belvedere assembly plant, we can see problems that the designers may not see be because we have built the cars. Wherever you look at Chrysler, the platform teams have changed the way cars are made. For example, this team that's working on the sunroof of the future small car would in the past have been told to design an inexpensive manual sunroof appropriate for a low-cost vehicle. The engineers would simply have done as they were told. But what happened here shows the benefits of empowered team decision making. You just have these two buttons here. Have the switches. You know, right, instead of some handle, you got to pull down, yeah. crank around, and do something. The team had a hunch that they could design a powered sunroof that would cost just a few dollars more than a manual one. By exploring new technologies and working with willing suppliers, they succeeded in giving customers of this future car a powered sunroof at low cost. The team is empowered to go back to management and tell them what they recommend under the new system. Uh, it's very much more likely for management to, to go with what the team recommends, provided that we have the right information. As the future car takes shape, the new mechanical components are assembled into an old body style and road tested in places like Chrysler's Arizona Proving Grounds. The PL Mule performance was compared with the performance of two Honda Civics. It's just steering response and feeling of stability and turn in and everything has just gotten, I mean, a whole lot better. Very confidence inspiring car. And on the, the 300 foot circle, I, uh, I did about two or three laps at absolute full throttle. Full throttle, and it just scrubs off its own speed, lift your foot off, doesn't do anything. And then coming back here, I just figured I'd just do some stupid stuff with it, like go fast, crank the wheel over max and everything. It doesn't do anything. While the PL was still in the mule stage, the LH cars were about to go into production. Corporate officers tested the Chrysler New Yorker, the Eagle Vision, and the Dodge Intrepid against a Cadillac STS, an Acura Legend, and a Ford Taurus. We confirmed our belief that the LH is going to be a, a total world beater. I mean, we have a car that has all of the best qualities of the finest European and, and Japanese uh, high-end sedans, but at the price that people pay for mid-size American cars. I think it's going to knock the socks off of the Japanese competition. The cars sure look great from straight aft and three quarters aft, and also when you see them in your rearview mirror. I mean, they, they are magic. I mean, there's oh, something I, entirely new. I thought the automatic transmissions were excellent. I thought the upshifts, they were all the stuff that we had seen Way before. better than Honda. Oh, the Honda, way, the Honda. Way better than Honda. After the test drive, the group met with the LH platform team for a debriefing. Along with his praise for the car, Lutz made some suggestions. We just have to make sure that the team keeps focusing on everything we have to do for uh, silence and refinement and BSR because the other... But modifications take time. And in the new spirit of the platform system, team leader Glenn Gardner is free to voice objections. 
The guys they're understand right. the task. You're absolutely right. They're clear what they're going to do. Yeah. But if we have to change interior colors and do all the color matching that goes on and we juggle wheels and tires around, which will impact the suspension system, then that will deteriorate from no, the job I, we I have to do. So. Hello and welcome to the 1992 Chicago Auto Show and to the Chrysler New Yorker concept, which closely resembles... Just two weeks later, the proposed New Yorker version of the LH is shown as a concept car at the Chicago Auto Show. Once again, customer comments provide critical feedback. We have four kids and I'd like to have a, a classy looking car that I don't, I don't want a van. I want to be able to get all my kids in a car that looks like this. If this car costs 25 grand, I'd buy it today. The admirers of the Chrysler New Yorker concept car at the auto show will not have to wait long to buy this car. Thanks to the platform system, the time it takes to develop a car from concept to production has been dramatically reduced. What the platform system is doing is eliminating the waste, the redo, the endless discussion, the, the restart of the clock because we forgot about something. The goal of making Chrysler cars the best in their class involves knowing what the competition is doing. Recently, a disassembled 1992 Camry was evaluated by the large car platform team. They use a lower cast iron uh, mounting base with an aluminum extension. After assessing the engine parts, the team looked at the stripped-down body and questioned why the Toyota engineers put foam into a door pillar post. We're totally puzzled by that. If you're going to fill it with foam, you would want the whole cavity, you would think, sealed. And I can't, the, the, the gauge is so heavy, I can't believe they're just dampening the, the panel with the foam. The foam didn't work. Well, yeah. <laughs> and this is around the door, or where the striker is? or It's right here in the B pillar. So we are, we are scratching our our engineering heads to... That's exactly what I intended to do, to confuse us. <laughs> <laughs> the cultural changes at Chrysler have impacted the manufacturing plants as well. In the fall of 1991, at Warren Truck Assembly, the employees were given an unprecedented advanced look at a pickup truck that they will be building two years later. Nice looking truck. I've worked here at Warren Truck for 20 years. This is the first time the company's ever bothered to show us an upcoming vehicle. We're the one that's got to build this truck, and it shows that, you know, they care how we feel about the truck. It's not like it used to be like management owning an hourly worker and having no input into the situation. But now we're all one team. At the stamping plants, where sheet metal is transformed from blank sheets into body parts, like this door aperture, the platform system was responsible for a multi-million dollar cost reduction. You can't cut and shape a complex part with just one impression so several very expensive stamping steps and dies are needed. Taking advantage of the new lines of communication, the manufacturing people collaborated with the designers to modify the future small car so that the number of stamping steps could be significantly reduced. The stamped body parts are joined with thousands of other components at the assembly plant. The hourly employees at this Newark, Delaware assembly plant embody the new spirit that can be found in Chrysler manufacturing. The goal is continuous improvement of quality and productivity. I always tell my people, use the five why techniques to get to the root cause of your problem. If something goes wrong, you say, why did that happen? And you'll get an answer. And you say, well, why did that happen? And you'll get an answer. Ask five whys. By the time you get to the fifth why, you'll find out the real cause of why that machine broke down and you can go fix it. Workers have been divided into teams, like this one, whose job it is to install the door trim panel. These are not like the teams typical of the 1970s and 80s. These are empowered teams functioning within the platform and led by a co-worker. We have a saying, you could give a, a monkey six bananas a week and do the same things we were doing. You didn't have to think, it was just very repetitious. But now we think on air jobs. This man has some authority now, he can, he can get things straightened out. He can no longer ship junk down that line. He can take pride in his work because now he knows people will listen to him. So now he knows he's got authority. 
The team meets frequently to get updates from Clyde and to discuss problems on the line. Yeah, Clyde, we get getting quite a few of those uh, damaged cables on the uh, hot box system uh, coming through. Can we get something done about it? That was given to one of the upper management staff, and what they said they were going to do is they wanted a list of all the bad cables that were coming through. What's happening is they're coming through. As a line worker myself, used to, if I got a defective part from the vendor, I wouldn't say a thing about it. Even if I knew how to fix it, I'd let it go. But under a new system, if I get a defective part, especially if I get two or three reincurring, me and the guys who work with me, we want to know why that's coming to us. Right now, I have a personal contact with the vendor. I have his personal number to get a hold of him at any time I want to, 24 hours a day. Continuing improvement is found throughout the plants. The team responsible for installing the canvas of the convertible tops developed a tool to facilitate the stretching process. A maintenance worker suggested that if all the plastic caps used by suppliers were made of the same material, they could more easily be recycled. Both the corporation and the UAW uh, is listening more to the people on the floor and allowing them to have the input uh, to actually run their job. We've evolved into a uh, workforce and a management union group that realizes that to be competitive, we've got to draw the best from our people. Uh, they've got to be involved more participatively and uh, have more control over their day-to-day -day work functions. Many of the new manufacturing systems have been applied here at the brand new Jefferson North Assembly Plant, where the 1993 Grand Cherokee is being built. For example, the rework or repair areas have been radically reduced. A lot of plants assume things are going to go wrong when you build an automobile. So what they do, they build big repair areas that may hold three, four hundred cars on the inside and put, be able to park a thousand cars in repair lots outside. That way when things go wrong, they don't have to stop the line. They can just dump everything into repair. We really believe that Jefferson, we're going to do things and build it right the first time. We have one of the smallest repair areas in the world. The platform system has also changed the role of the suppliers who make many of the thousands of parts and components that go into the cars. In a break with the past, suppliers participate up front in the planning of the cars. In the old way, we, uh, we controlled everything and we went out and found people to make it like we thought they ought to make it. And now we're going back and saying, well, if you make radios, you know more about it than we do, and you should be the expert in it. And they, it turns out they are. Johnson Controls is a major supplier of seat systems to Chrysler. Formerly, suppliers like Johnson would bid for one-year contracts based on Chrysler's specific engineering plans. Now the suppliers are selected much earlier and given multi-year contracts. Now Chrysler gives Johnson the responsibility for the design, for the engineering, for the development, for the processing and then the assembly of that seat system. You know, in terms of cost, in terms of quality, in terms of, of getting the waste out of the entire process. I mean, what they have done here is, I believe, given themselves a very competitive edge in a marketplace. The Prince Corporation, which makes headliners, is another Chrysler supplier. The adversarial relationships are, being, are gone it, instead of it's they, us. This is a we program now. We're working together to bring a car to the marketplace. We're as interested as Chrysler is, is having a good car in the marketplace, and we're gonna do all we can uh, to achieve that. Another change in the supplier relationship is called sequential delivery. You can see it in action at the Johnson Control seat plant. Sequential delivery is an extension of the more familiar just-in-time delivery where parts reach the assembly plant just in time to be installed in the vehicles. Under sequential delivery, the seats are made in the color and option sequence that exactly matches the sequence of the cars being built. These seats were delivered to Jefferson North for installation in the Grand Cherokee. So instead of having a load of red seats and a load of blue seats, uh, and next one green, we'll have them all intermingled, and that is the same order that we're building the vehicles in. So there is zero inventory left laying around, and in fact, uh, the supplier is really building in the same rate that we're building vehicles. The platform system has altered the sales, service, and marketing of the cars as well. Formerly, people from these functions had almost no role to play in the development of the car. What has happened with the platform change and, and, and our reorganization is that marketing is now an upfront piece of the voice of the customer into the start of this process from its design all the way through its manufacturing process. The platform system also means that design, engineering, and manufacturing people are involved in sales and marketing. For example, they participated in this marketing review for the LH sedans. We are positioning LH as a milestone American car. 
that emulates the best of Europe, Japan, and America. We're focusing on attracting a whole new kind of buyer. The challenge of satisfying this demanding new buyer provoked the discussion. Every customer letter we get says the same thing. I'm, I'm going to give you, in fact, Bob just one circulated chance. one today. I'm going to give you one more chance. Okay, Damn it, I'm going to go do it, but that's your last chance, and we've got to do the quality job. We are going after an upmarket customer. A must upmarket customer is a harder customer to satisfy than a lot of people. To reach so, this customer, the advertising plan has been restructured. Customers today are looking for more information. Uh, it is a more serious market. It's, it's, uh, there are 600 entries out there today. So we have changed our advertising to be much more focused and much more targeted on, um, on today's consumers. Later in the meeting, the discussion shifted to the tough task of making a trip to the dealer a more pleasant experience. They looked at a videotape of a group of consumers talking about their experiences with dealers. Before you go, you're like, you brace yourself because you get ready for the fight. No matter how hard you negotiate, you know you could have got a better deal if you'd have hung in there a little longer. And that's why I, I'm really against the way cars are sold in this country. Who's ever watching this video? I ought to go in a dealership, and, and maybe they have, and, and, and just pose as a customer. I mean, it's just incredible. Chrysler has responded by launching a new program that rewards dealers who handle their customers properly. The result should be a new experience for the customer. When customers enter this showroom, they can examine the cars at their leisure without a high-pressure sales pitch. It's more, more one where they're trying to find what I want and satisfy that, as opposed to, to sell me something they want to sell me. The new incentive program rewards dealers who have high CSIs, or Customer Satisfaction Indexes. The number one key is to satisfy your customers. Um, I feel like that's good business. If you take good care of the customer and keep them satisfied, he'll come back and spend money with you. And that's what, what we're interested in, is for that customer to keep coming back, uh, spending his money, referring their friends and family to us. We've done something that no other manufacturer, to our knowledge, has done, and that is we're going to tie uh, the dealer's financial well-being to how well he takes care of the customer. If you would like, then I can notify your dealer about this. To ensure satisfaction with the vehicles and the service, Chrysler is now calling customers 30 days after purchase and again at the end of the year. Oh, great. That's wonderful to hear. And we certainly like to keep you satisfied with your... In addition to making sure that customers are promptly serviced, these calls give Chrysler immediate data on possible problems with new vehicles. We've really picked a lot of the low-hanging fruit. It was a lot of the obvious waste. And... and and uh, inadequate ways of doing business we've changed. Uh, where we go from here on is really tough work now. Chrysler's vision of the future is embodied in senior management's dedication to constant improvement. You can see it in action at the new Liberty facility where new products and innovations are developed. Some are highly experimental like this proposed engine without a camshaft and some are customer oriented like this computerized instrument panel. The display can be easily changed according to driver preference. We are no longer the company we were. We are not yet the company we want to be. The Viper is a demonstration of Chrysler's creativity, willingness to explore new concepts, move fast, take risk. We are probably in an industry where the competition is so intense that to survive, you cannot stand still. And you have to make up your mind that there's no such a thing as using what worked the, the year before or 10 years before. At the weekly meeting of the corporate officers uh, in the operating drive, committee, drive, the drive for excellence continues. The real secret is to get the change in culture and change in mentality to where the individual operating executive feels that he is accountable for quality. At that point, you don't need a quality staff or a quality bureaucracy. I think people are starting to get comfortable with the thought that we can be the strongest company in the United States. But I think this, this company has within it the ability to be the strongest company in the world. As you know, long before it was fashionable, men like Henry Ford, Walter P. Chrysler, Carl Benz, and others practiced platform or simultaneous engineering. They were both product and manufacturing engineers. They designed the cars, and they designed the factories to build them. They wouldn't have understood any other way to work. As the business grew and became more complex, the idea was abandoned. Now we're going back to it again. 
this film makes it clear that the Chrysler platform teams are the key to bringing new products to market faster and with higher quality and with higher reliability.